Welcome to Paint on Plastic with Lincoln Wright. Hi guys, let's talk about chipping. Uh, for my white knight, I'm going to do a very slightly different style. Well, in fact, I think it's probably very different style. Uh, although, to the casual observer, it might look quite similar. The, um, the difference is going to be that on the ammonite. Um, it's a very high contrast, stark look, but it's actually very simple. It was painted well, of course, but it's done very simple. It's basically just one color. The difference with these ones will be that it's going to be a multicolor approach with less contrast. So uh, that is one of the overall themes, in a way, for the Mark, uh, Mark 44 White Knight. Uh, and once they're both done, and I photograph them together for you, you'll be able to see what I mean. The main thing that I can share with you now is the process. Tools required, uh, first of all, will be a nice pointy brush, a size one, series seven, Winsor and Newton, and um, a little piece of sponge that is from this. Uh, it's just a basic, uh, kitchen, bathroom type sponge. Uh, paints I'll be using for this step will be this intense white and uh, the off white. Now this does not require that you use water-based acrylics. Uh, equally you could do this with lacquer paint, enamel paint. Uh, I'm going to be using water-based acrylics on a wet palette. Uh, you could also use water-based uh, paints inside just something like this. This is a little milk top. Uh, depending on your environment and because of filming and what have you, uh, I find this quite useful because it keeps my paints in a, in a stable sort of condition for, for longer. Okay, first is the sponge ring. Now, due to the low contrast uh, of the white on white, this may be difficult for some of you to see. Uh, and again, the more important thing is talking about the process for you so that you can then experiment and own it yourself. Even in close-up, these, by design, are relatively low contrast. That's off-white painted over the space white. And what it produces is a very natural chipped effect. You can see it on the edge of the, of the armor piece here. And that's what I'm going for here, is a very uh, soft, uh, low contrast, blended in look that will, once over the model and the darker chips are placed inside, will look very natural. Uh, whilst adding detail and uh, edging the model as well. Now this is not specific to this color of model. We can do this kind of approach by using, uh, you know, lightened base colors. Now the steps themselves are deceptively simple. Uh, the main thing that you have to do is get it right. You've got to use it so that they look good. Now you can see I've got the bright white and the off white. I'm going to go with off white first uh, because it's the lowest contrast and are there kids screaming outside? Mm. Okay, I swear guys, it's not me. This one's good for various things. This will be the most forgiving of the steps. Uh, and as you can maybe see, uh, there is some white uh, poking through the yellow. So I've kind of been leading towards this step. I've actually somewhat, I wouldn't call it chipped, but I've prefaced this stage by uh, the judicious use of the airbrush in letting some of that white white poke through. Although I can't say the words cleanly, I do feel that my command of English has improved from three years ago. <laughs> okay, so we can, I'll test it out in forgiving places, but being that this is water-based on lacquer, they're very easy to brush off. There we go. Look towards the edges that we want to chip, places that will have heavy use. Like this, these edges are prime real estate. And what these will look like, rather than looking like chips, so this is one of the challenges I feel we have with solely relying on uh, hairspray chips, is that making the different depth and color variations is very complicated and challenging. You of course can do it. If you're very motivated and you set your mind to it, you can do almost anything. But it's very difficult and time consuming to do, and more likely than not, you might give up halfway through. But with this approach, you're also developing a core skill, uh, such that when I recently posted uh, the internals of this model uh, in that uh, the weathering group on Facebook, it's a fantastic group, uh, lots of really good high quality content there, um, I had one question, is it uh, hairspray? And I'm 
very happy about that. If people don't know, if they can't tell, then the suspension of disbelief is correct. And I feel as a content maker that I've achieved my mission. If you can't tell, then it must look good enough. Okay. Now that will be very difficult for you to see and that is by design. Uh, it's meant to be a very low uh, contrast look and it, it will be more visible uh, in close-up photography. And as we know, YouTube is not that. So that's an example. I don't like that. So we wipe off and good. Cool. Well, that's a very simple one. Uh, another place that's probably easy to see and work on this large one. Uh, let's go with bright white now because I'm working at the top of the model. Uh, I feel I can get away with a, a slightly higher contrast and I'll put it for places like this that will catch the light. Yep, cool. Now here's one. This is important. Let's try to get an edge catch here. Nice. And then maybe some top down. Yeah, that's really good. Now this is a foundation for a further step with the paintbrush. Yep, cool. I find it hard to do my best thinking while talking. I'll just give you a couple more examples. In here needs one. This proud section here. Okay. So that's it. That's my foundation step moving between off-white and white to lay down soft paint bruises and very minimal light chips. Uh, I don't think the camera will pick this up, the video camera won't pick this up, but I have a soft line of paint bruising happening on this proud section here. But once this is finished and gone through all of the processes, uh, once the macro lens picks that up, it will look fantastic. Here's the probably the best viewpoint to show you about the resolution I'm looking at for the, the primary chipping component which will be the underlying white and then uh, I'll be moving on with the darker chipping uh, over the top. The couple of places uh, due to the uh, the randomness of the sponge, you can see that's the actual one used in anger, it's got the white paint on it, The uh, sometimes it's not quite thick enough, the, uh, the opacity of the paint. So I've decided against very long scratches on this one because of the, the way I see it moving during its operation. I don't think it would be spending time uh, brushing past things that could produce that kind of effect. So I'm mostly going to have it as a, you know, not too many flights in space, but in a combat zone level of weathering. And that's what I see as my vision. So uh, they won't be jagged ones with it or long ones. They'll mostly be uh, pinpoint ones from, uh, say, micro abrasion is the word I'm thinking in my mind, but that's not correct. So it'll be more of a very uh, micro type of, uh, of uh, abrasion to the to finish uh, through micro collisions um, due to the debris in the uh, space combat zone. So breaking out E. Mm -hmm. So my Winsor Newton size one. Let's make sure it's got a little bit of water in it. And uh, I'll be going with this one, uh, the intense white, and keying in just a couple of places. This could be very time consuming, but uh, we've done our heavy lifting with the sponge and this will just break them up even, even slightly further. Uh, but just don't do them all. This is the number one thing I, I need you to think about is uh, don't do them all because uh, you want that natural variance that happens from that process. Uh, otherwise, we, if we wanted them all to look the same, we could have done a different technique. And in fact, uh, then I would recommend may maybe to have gone with, uh, say, hairspray for this, perhaps. But I don't recommend that. I recommend you do it just like me, but better. Now, do it to your taste. Seriously, that's what I want you to do. And I want you to have fun thinking about this zooming around because they're really cool. Hello? Okay. Now one place that we will definitely need, 
definitely use the wet palette uh, also to help shape your brush. It helps in keeping the point. Now one place in particular we really need to sell the opacity. Well, let me say that again. One place where we need the opacity to work for us in helping to sell the authenticity of these chips is on our water slides. The very small ones can will look just fine. Some of these bigger ones though, as they've been translucent with the yellow underneath, uh, they lose a little bit of their realism. So just dotting on slightly thicker paint here will help to add to that illusion. Cool. Now you will need to go back and look because it will depend on your paint uh, dilution as to how effective that final look is. One different one here. Just to help the edge pop a tad on those corners. Not that. Not that one. Two steps forward, one step back. Well done, Link. Same with this one here. I think I've made this one too big. So I'm just going to edge it back with my finger now for you. Now the cool thing about that is that it changes the shape further. There's very few actual chips on the model that are fingernail edged. So that's hyper unique. Okay, cool.